Hey everybody, welcome to another video here on the channel. Uh, today we're going to be brewing another batch of beer and I've got my kettle sitting here and getting ready to pour the water in and heat up. But first I want to tell you about what we're doing differently today than we did last time. This is going to be a much simpler method of brewing beer and one that just about anybody with uh, a little bit of equipment, maybe $250 worth of equipment, versus $1,000 maybe with the, the first method I did. Um, we're gonna be doing things a little bit more simply and with definitely um, a much easier method. All of the ingredients we have for today, except for the yeast, are here in this box. And yes, I did get it from Northern Brewer. Um, we're gonna be brewing a nut brown ale and the ingredients are a little bit different, as you can see, because we don't have 12 pounds of grain. What we're brewing with instead is liquid malt extract. And this is a method that can be used um, best when you have some fresh liquid malt extract from a company that has a good bit of turnover. You don't want this stuff to have sat on the shelf for months and months and years at a time before it gets used. So that is the main ingredient of today's beer, and that is six pounds of liquid malt extract. Uh, for this nut brown ale, it is gold malt extract syrup. This is basically uh, the grain mashed down and then concentrated, kind of like the first several steps of our last video. The difference between a lot of Northern Brewers kits and some other extract kits that you might find is they also include some steeping grains or a mini mash that we're going to use to flavor the beer uh, with actual grain before we do the addition of the malt syrup. This is a 15 minute mini mash. It's not a whole hour mash that we have to go through uh, and monitor the temperature and all that. We get it to the temperature, we stick it in for 15 minutes in this little grain sack here, then we pull it out and throw it away. We don't have to worry about sparging, we don't have to worry about any of that. It's a whole lot simpler. Um, the hops for today is just one ounce of U.S. Fuggle, and that's going to be added at 60 minutes, if I am not mistaken. Yes, so right at the beginning of the boil, um, as soon as it comes to a boil, we're going to add that ounce of hops, and that's all the hops that are going into this beer. Um, this beer is not going to be an IPA at all like the last one. We're not adding a ton of hops for a lot of that hot flavor. Just a little bit of bitterness to balance out the, the mostly sweet, malty beer that we're going to end up with. The yeast is one thing you're not going to see in this box, and that's because I already had it. Um, let me get that yeast and you can take a look at it here. So last time, as you might recall, we used a bag of liquid yeast, and that can produce some really, really high quality beers. What I'm doing today is using a dry powdered yeast, um, and this has been stored in the refrigerator. This is Safeail SO4, previously I think US 4 they might have marked it as. I'm not exactly sure, but this is the British type ale yeast uh, from Safeail, and I've made a couple of good beers with this yeast before, so uh, we're gonna give it a shot. What I'm going to do first to this yeast, before I start warming up the water, before I get going in any of the brewing, is I'm going to rehydrate this yeast so that it's not shocked when I throw it into um, the wort that is all full of sugars and um, it can actually shock the yeast to throw it in there too quick and it takes a long time to catch up. So what we're going to do first is rehydrate this yeast by boiling some water, uh, cooling it down so we get it as sanitary as possible, and then once it's cooled down to between 70 and 80 degrees, we'll throw this yeast in and just let it sit there until uh, we're ready to pitch it later on. It's going to sit covered with a lid so nothing gets in, nothing funky uh, can infect our culture, and um, this will provide us with a really good, nice, clean beer. So just like last time, we're going to start out with a good clean kettle. Um, there's been some crud in the bottom of it, and I've scraped all that out, washed it out. Our, our boil off will be about a gallon in our, our boil. <laughs> we're going to add six gallons to heat with right away. So I'm going to start with this five, and then I'll add another one. 
according to the directions, you start with two to three gallons, I believe, of water and steep in that and then add your syrup and then you add water at the end. Because I have a big 10 gallon kettle, I prefer to do the full volume boil. It seems to get more flavor in. I have not done an extract batch like this in probably a good four years. Since I switched over to brewing a bag, I haven't really done anything else since that because uh, it's worked out so good for me. But today we're going to be doing this extract batch because it's just a lot simpler overall and it takes a whole lot less time. It's about 1.15 in the afternoon right now. The sun sets at 5 o'clock. I'm hoping to have this done before the sun sets. We've got our water on the boil, so we're going to dump our grain in the bag here. And of course I ripped not quite enough of it off. Okay, we're not resealing this bag and I'm not seeming to be able to break the seal. So we'll just do it the easy way. We're gonna get a whole lot of dust from this bag when we dump it in the sock and that's okay. Yeah, see all that blowing off of there? Oops, I lost a little grain, not too much. This uh, steeping grain right here, you can see a lot of dust coming out of there. I'm just gonna bounce it a little bit and get some more of that out because I don't necessarily want all that dust to end up in the beer. Let me tie it here. According to the package, uh, this steeping grain is a quarter pound of English chocolate, a quarter pound of Belgian special B, a quarter pound of Belgian biscuit, and then a quarter pound of special roast. And it smells amazing. What I'm gonna do now is search for a wire to suspend it in there without it touching the bottom because we're gonna have the heat on while it's going so I don't want it um, to be touching the bottom. The directions say to go ahead and put it in now and then to steep for 20 minutes or until the water reaches 170. I've done it that way before and then I've got the water to 160, let it set, put the grains in, let it steep. We're just gonna do this the quick way today and go with the directions and go ahead and put it in the water um, and then steep it for uh, until the water reaches 170. Again, I think I brought this up last time, but we don't want the temperature to go over 170 um, because when we do, we bring out tannins and we leach stuff from the grain that we don't want. So we're gonna get it to that spot and then we're gonna get the grain out of there. All right, I've got found the piece of wire I actually have used for this exact job since I started brewing. We're just gonna loop and end through here. And it doesn't matter if we puncture the bag, this is pretty much a one-use bag. I'm just gonna hang it from that knot, and then I'm gonna get this to suspend kind of in the middle of the pot. And that actually does quite nicely. Uh, we've got it sitting off of the bottom. It's not clear. Yep, definitely not touching the bottom. But we've got it hanging out there in the liquid and you can see we've got just a little bit of color starting to get into it's come from this side yeah you can see just a little bit of color starting to come from that grain and into the water here's where i'm going to differ from the recipe just a little bit you can see we've got this nice golden brown color to the liquid now and our temperature is at well i just measured it a second ago it's at about 155 degrees. I'm gonna stop it right there. We have got seven minutes left on our 20 minute timer, but I want that grain to sit in there as long as I can. So I'm gonna cut our flame for right now and we're gonna hold out the rest of the seven minutes right here at, uh, looks like it's not quite up to 160 yet, 158. That's gonna be good. I'm just gonna let it sit there and we're gonna get as much flavor from this grain as we can. We're gonna give it about another seven minutes and then I'll come back and we'll pull the grain back. While we're waiting to pull that grain bag out while it finishes steeping, um, I'm gonna talk about a few things. This recipe is written and designed for people that don't have the 10 gallon kettle set up. 
you can do this with a three gallon pot on the stove. Um, the instructions start out to collect and heat two and a half gallons of water. So you're only heating two and a half gallons um, and using that to brew the entire batch of beer. Then at the end, you add two gallons of cold water to the carboy and then you top off as needed after you dump the stuff from your two and a half to three gallon pot in. That makes it really nice for people who don't want to spend a lot of money on brewing equipment but would like to try their hand at brewing a batch of beer. You can do this whole thing um, with just a pot on your stove. If you haven't given brewing a try before, I would encourage you to buy a kit like this uh, from Northern Brewer or a different retailer that has a pretty good turnover and brew a batch of beer on your stove at home if you don't already have the equipment. Now, if you've got a turkey fryer and a big turkey pot, you can do exactly what I'm doing. Um, of course, make sure all the oil's cleaned out of it. All right, our 20 minute timer is done. So we're gonna come over here to the pot and pull out our bag of grains. And I'll let all that liquid drain out of there that I can, because that is good, rich stuff coming out. And once I do this, I'm probably gonna dunk it back in one more time. And we'll give it another rinse with the liquid it's already in. Yeah, that liquid that's in there, coming out of the bag, is darker than the liquid surrounding. Let that drain for a minute. I don't remember whether to squeeze the bag or not. I'm gonna give it, oh, that's hot. Just a gentle squeeze, get some of that out. And I'll set it in this jug for now. And once it's drained for a bit in this jug, I'll dump the contents of the jug back in. All right, now we'll light the burner back up and bring things up to a boil. While we're bringing this up to a boil, I'm gonna do a couple of things to prepare. I will admit I'm doing one new thing that I've never tried um, today. I've got a couple of muslin tea bags here. These are reusable. I use them quite a bit for making kombucha, but I'm gonna put the hops in here. I've got the one ounce of Fuggle hops, and I'm gonna put about a half in each of these bags. We're gonna try to do this to contain all the sludge and stuff that cakes up in the pot. Ooh, they smell good. So we're gonna try to, to keep as much of the hop junk out of there as we can. So I'm gonna get about a half an ounce in each bag here. And we'll be adding these at the beginning of the boil. I didn't get it quite even, but that's okay. These will swell up quite a bit, so I didn't wanna put them all in one bag, but you see about how much we've got there. So I'll cinch these up and put a little, I guess I'll put one knot in them because they're going to be bouncing around in the boil kettle through the whole hour. The other thing I've done to prepare is I've put my jug of malt syrup in front of the fireplace blower to get it good and warmed up so that it flows out of the jug easier. That is from personal experience. It is very thick when you're trying to pour it in here and trying to rinse the thing out over and over is kind of a hassle. So I'm doing that to kind of warm it up ahead of time so we don't run into so much trouble. Let's get a temperature check. The liquid is very hot. We're getting too... We're at 176 degrees. When we get to 200 or 210, somewhere in that area, I'll add the syrup. 
We are just above 200 degrees, so it's time to add in our malt syrup. Oh, we got a seal on there. I'm about to reach a boil, so I'm gonna turn down this heat a little bit. All right, I had to cut that seal out of there. It wouldn't go this time, but let's uh, get our spoon. I'm gonna rinse it off a little bit here. And we'll start slowly stirring in the syrup. It's gonna cool things down just a little bit in here. But I'm gonna get this uh, stirring at a pretty good rate so that the stir syrup doesn't go to the bottom um, with the flame and scorch quickly. So I'm gonna keep it stirred while I'm going. I think it's dissolving pretty well in there. I did taste this syrup just now when I uh, pulled off the seal. And it tastes really good. You could use this on pancakes even. Okay, now that I've got most of it dumped out of here, I'm gonna speed up the process of getting the rest of it out of the jug just a little bit. And, and because it was warmed up, it came out a whole lot easier than it otherwise would have. But I'm gonna speed it up just a little bit by getting a Pyrex. And we're going to get a little bit of near boiling liquid. Now be careful you don't scorch the hand you're holding onto it with. Near boiling liquid in there. And we'll swish it around. Maybe even put the cap on it, shake it. Well, that puffed up <laughs> right away because the temperature increased in there. And I believe that got most of the liquid off the sides. And I'll pull the camera over here so you can see, but we're getting a little bit of our first hot break. Nice and foamy there on the top. I'm gonna go ahead and crank our heat back up and we'll get this boil going. As soon as we get the actual boil going here, I'll throw in these two little bags of hops and we'll start our 60 minute timer. By doing the extract method, we've cut out a whole bunch of time that we would have otherwise been mashing and sparging and all of that. So right now, about 30 minutes into brewing, we are where we would otherwise be an hour and a half to two hours into brewing an all grain batch. This would heat up faster and things would even go uh, quicker if you were doing this as a two and a half gallon boil on your stove. And we are just about there. You can see the bubbles start to break through that little bit of foam there. And that's the start of our boil. And go ahead and throw in the hop bags. And before long, the nutty, grainy aromas coming out of here will be mixed with the, the piney hop smell, which will dissipate just a little bit by the end of the boil. All right, here's our first, well, second, I guess you could call it, but the first real hot break. So I'm gonna kill the heat just a little bit. Turn the heat down just slightly so we don't overflow and keep stir, stir, stirring. Otherwise, we're going to end up with a sticky mess. You can see how much that foamed up. This is six gallons of water in a 10 gallon kettle, and we're probably four inches from the top. I may knock the heat down just a little bit more. I do like it when my kettle and everything is lift it up off the ground a little bit, but I don't have anything real good to set it on. Oh, look at that. Our hot bag, if I can fish one out of there, is completely swollen. Some of that's gonna get out, but hopefully the bag will trap most of it. All right, we still got a good boil going, but it looks like our hot break is 
mostly over. And I'll crank that heat back up just a little bit if we need to, but we might not need to. We got enough flame to keep up a good boil, so that's gonna be good enough. So while this boil goes, I like to make sure everything else that we're getting ready is clean. Um, I make sure my immersion chiller is clean, and I've actually already scrubbed this off and soaked it in a little bit of um, old star sand solution. It was evidently still fairly acidic because you can see the difference between the color of the stuff that was outside of it and that was in it. Um, it cleaned out really quickly. So that's good. That's ready to go. The immersion chiller is one thing that you do not have to have. Um, a lot of people will use an ice bath in the sink, especially for cooling down the smaller volume um, of two and a half gallons. And you can even do that with the bigger batch, um, but this is just a lot easier. You could probably make this immersion chiller with parts from the hardware store anywhere from $25 to $35-ish, and that's just estimating. But I bought this whole thing um, complete with anti-drip fittings. Oh, there's a little more stuff I need to clean off of that seal. Anti-drip fittings and the tubing all connected and the hose coupler and everything. Um, already connected for about 50 bucks and I think you can still pick one up for about that price. Other things we're gonna need um, is our carboy and I've already washed this out. Um, got a little more stuff I'll probably wash off there but it's good to go for the most part. Um, our bucket I just use this to clean and sanitize things in but I've got our um, racking cane here and the top to our carboy, let's see, uh, tubing. You can see this has got a little bit of a green tint to it. I need to get this washed out good. The green tint is from a very hoppy beer. Well, actually, um, the last one that I did here on the channel. And then I've got the airlock in there and some other stuff. This is old sanitizer solution. I'm going to sanitize everything with fresh sanitizer solution. So I will show you how to mix that up. But for now, I just have everything in there soaking uh, some old crud particles off and that'll do good for us. So, I think that's all we have to talk about until the boil is finished, or until 20 minutes or so before the boil is finished. Um, this is still going along at a pretty good little boil. 20 minutes before the end of the boil, um, I'll add the immersion chiller, I'll add a few little extra things to this batch to help it get going. Um, but for right now, we're just gonna kinda sit back, relax, uh, maybe crack open a beer. All right, we are 20 minutes before the end of the boil. <clears throat> so I'm gonna stick in my immersion chiller. The boil will stop for a minute uh, when I get this in because this is cold and probably has a little cold water inside of it. So it'll stop the boil for just a minute, but that'll start back up. We don't have to worry about that too much. And I'm gonna make sure these tubes are away from the base of the pot because I have had them melt before. And I'll go ahead and get this hooked up to the hose. The one other thing I'm gonna do is add my normal blend of a half teaspoon of Y yeast yeast nutrient and a teaspoon of Irish moss. This is fairly optional, uh, but I always do it. It seems to help the big particles in the wort float out easier. Um, and once the yeast is finished with its work, the, the Irish moss seems to drag them to the bottom a little bit better. I might not have the best understanding of how that works, um, but that's my interpretation anyway. So I'm just gonna dump this in. And we're gonna let that go for the last 20 minutes, and then we'll start chilling. All right, we've got about six minutes left in the boil. Uh, so I'm gonna mix up some fresh star sand and we're gonna get everything that the beer is going to touch after it comes out of that pot um, sanitized. So this is mixed at a rate of one ounce per five gallons. Um, I'm gonna make about three gallons. So we'll ish that at like three fifths of an ounce. I, I like this star sand bottle cause I can easily measure up there's a half two-thirds or three we'll go three quarters that'll be close enough i'm going to dump that in there i've got two a little over two gallons in there now i'm 
and then I'll add, after I've dumped that in there, I'll add another gallon of water here to get it good and mixed up. If you want this solution to last longer and you're going to store it in a keg and use it over and over, um, using distilled water for this uh, makes the whole solution last a lot longer. But we're just going to do this and it'll work for us for now. Okay, so I've got our sanitizing solution in here. I'm going to get our tubing and our siphon and airlock and okay let's get this tubing and you notice it's still got kind of a green tint and that's okay it's not going to hurt anything it's just staining from all the hot material that went through it last time let's connect it to our racking cane here and we'll just use the racking cane to circulate sanitizing solution through the inside of our tubing We'll do that a couple of times and then I'll let it sit. We'll get this good and sloshed up around the inside of the carboy there. And it should, star sand foams up quite a bit, so you should see it foam and that is perfectly normal. It only needs a couple of minutes of contact time to do the job, but I like to let it soak for a little while just in case. Uh, let's get our spoon um, ready. I'm, I'll use this while it's still hot. I'll fish out those hot bags. So I'm not going to worry about sanitizing this yet. Before the end of the boil, I'm going to take our lid here, and I've wiped this off, and this is all good and clean. I'm going to set it kind of on the side here, and it'll steam sanitize that, because I'm going to use this while it's chilling down. I'm looking at our volume here in the pot, and you probably can't see it. Uh, for all the steam, but it's looking like we're a little bit below the halfway point. I may have to add water to this anyway, which will be just fine. I'm not worried about that. I set aside uh, a gallon of water specifically for adding back afterwards if we need to match up our volume. But that's the great thing about extract brewing. Um, we're not worried about being super precise. We're just trying to turn out a, uh, a good drinkable batch of beer that we're going to be able to bottle and set aside for um, drinking just when we need a, a good beer to drink. One other thing I'm going to add to the sanitizing pot is um, the little dropper that I'll use with my... Oh, there's the time. We are finished. 3.16 p.m. We've got flame out. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover that with the lid. Our flame is completely out. As I was saying a second ago, I'm gonna sanitize this dropper, drop it in the bucket here. Um, we're gonna use a refractometer once we have this cooled down to measure the specific gravity. Um, you can also use a hydrometer like this. Uh, we might also get a sample with that. But you don't have to do this at all. This is purely because I am an information geek and I like to know everything I possibly can about my batch of beer. Our target original gravity for this beer before it starts fermenting is 1044. So we'll see um, when we get all done if we hit anywhere close to that. I've got the flame turned out. Um, our wort chiller is hooked up and in the liquid here. So I'm going to crank the hose on and we're going to start chilling this down. All right, we've got water running through our chiller, cold water in this side, hot water out that side. And that tube is already floppy compared to this one because the hot water is coming through, being heated by that inside. You can see we've got steamy water coming out this side. Oh yeah, that's hot. So I'm just going to let that run off and I'm going to, kind of swirl this just slightly and eh, maybe I'll just leave it for a minute we're gonna let this sit in there and use the cool water going through our chiller coils to bring the temperature of this uh, down to a target of around 78 80 degrees something like that we are down to about 80 degrees in here and our ambient temperature is 55 so the transfer um, from here into our carboy 
uh, we'll drop it another couple degrees as well. So I'm gonna get the old sanitizing solution dumped out of my bucket here. And we're gonna get it all cleaned out so that I can put the sanitized parts into it. And the way I like to get everything sanitized here, I'll take one more swish, get everything swished around. Oh, I got it all over my sleeve, that's all right. Around on the inside of this carboy. And then I'll set it up on the table here like this, and we'll get our hose over to our bucket and just the fluid in the line already started the siphon down. So all of the sanitizing solution in here will get down into that bucket and let's give it just a little kickstart there. So we'll get our top ring, our top plate, our funnel, which we may or may not use. And let's see here. Oh, our uh, sampling bulb, stopper, and I'm missing our airlock. There it is, it's floating in there still. Good deal. The sanitizer's flowing in there pretty well. I'll give it a second to go. Meanwhile, let's pull out our immersion chiller and put our lid back on for now. I'm gonna move this pot up to the table so that stuff in the bottom can settle down. We'll get our top plate set on there to keep the majority of the crap out. Remember, this sanitizing solution is not harmful. It will dry your skin out just a little bit, but that's about the worst it will do. We'll give this just a second. Oh, it's pretty well settled down. So let me bring you over here and show you what I'm doing. So if you watched my last brewing video, the rest of this is pretty much the same, or this part is the same. I'm gonna get all of the excess sanitizing solution out of my tube here. A little bit doesn't matter. I'll try to get as much of that dumped out though as I can. And we'll feed, let me go ahead and put our ring in place. just to keep this from getting knocked off. And I'll feed our tube down through here. I'm just doing that to keep junk from falling in. Murphy's Law is at play here. There are leaves and acorns falling from the trees all over the place. Um, we're gonna be doing good not to get any in this kettle here. I'm going to try not to get any in the carboy where the final product is. Okay, we'll just get the tip in. And give it a few pumps. Just like that. And the siphon's going. All that beer will come right down into the carboy here. You can see maybe on the video it's starting to collect in the bottom. And we're going to get this whole thing out. So, oops, and I try not to do that. I'm going to speed this up on the video here. My memory card needed swapped out and the battery in my uh, audio recorder ran dead so I had to switch things around a little bit. But I finished siphoning the beer into the carboy here and indeed we have just over uh, four gallons. So what I'm going to do, um, oh, I might normally leave that alone if the specific gravity was where I wanted. And if we fermented it out right now we would have a beautiful beer. Um, but I'm going to shoot for that 1044 gravity target. And I'm actually going to add just a little bit of water to it. Um, this is a gallon of water that I set aside earlier. And I'm going to dump in... We're going to go just under that five-gallon mark. And yeah, right about... We're, we're almost to the five-gallon mark, and I'm going to leave it there. My guess is that's gonna get us to the gravity we want, and even if we're just a little bit under, that is perfectly fine. Now what I'm gonna do is tighten this up. 
Um, well, I'll go ahead and put the cork in it and pop the airlock out. And we're going to try to get some of this oxygen. Um, well, 21% of this is oxygen. And get it into the suspension. We want as much oxygen in here as we can get. Well, not as much, but we, we want to... We want a ton of oxygen in here for the yeast to use to reproduce before um, they convert to anaerobic respiration and start con producing alcohol and CO2. So we're going to get this good and shaken up. It might leak a little bit, but I'm not too worried about that. <laughs> All right, and that's good and foamy. That'll also get get a chance to mix the um, water with the wort and I'm going to get this down below the level of the foam and get a bit of a sample there and we're at 1045 with a target of 1044 that's absolutely perfect um, so we are ready to pitch our yeast so here I've got our yeast that's been rehydrating you can see that a little bit of it is uh, gathered there on the top. I'm just going to swirl this to resuspend all of that. You can see we've got a, a nice little slurry in there. And we will dump it in. The last thing to do before we put this in a cool, dark place is to get our bubbler on there, our airlock. I've got it. Eh, let me empty just a, a few drops out there. Okay, we've got it about half full all the way across. And I've got the stopper in place. We'll just put it right through the stopper. And that'll get us where we need to be. I'll come back to you guys in about a day when we've got some fermentation activity. This cap of foam here will all settle down, then we'll get a new cap of foam that's a Krausen with a bunch of active yeast, and um, it will be fermenting and bubbling away. So we'll come back then. So we're kind of back in this corner over here. As you can see, we've got a nice active fermentation going on there. Big thick cap of foam on top of the carboy, that's the Krausen. And look at all that bubbling activity. We are actually 48 hours from when I put this carboy back here. And I'm keeping it out of the basement in here is a mess. But I've got a cool, dark place over here um, that's not getting a lot of direct sunlight or any direct sunlight during the day. So it is um, safe back in there and blocked from that. The reason you don't want to have it in direct sunlight um, is that the hops can be affected by the, the sunlight and throw off a skunky, um, weird flavor that you really don't want in your beer. So there it is for now. We will come back in about two weeks and put this in the bottle. All right, we are down in my workshop. You can see it's very messy, but this beer has been in the bottle for about two and a half, three weeks now, and we're gonna give it a try. Um, I did skip showing you guys the bottling process because uh, that's kind of long and boring and there's plenty of other videos on YouTube on how to do it and uh, my way is not unique or spectacular in any way. So, the only thing different about uh, the priming and bottling of this beer is that I did use brown sugar for the uh, priming agent. I pulled up a priming sugar calculator on the internet, put it in there, and uh, boiled that and mixed it in with some water before adding it to the batch to prime. So, use my uh, 308 shell here and we'll uncap it. <clears throat> and let's pour it here and see what we get. See, we got some good carbonation in there. Let me show you that. And I'm going to stop just a little before the end. I could have probably poured that a little harder, but you can see we do have some foam on the top there. I'm getting a good brown ale, 
nose on it right away. Maybe just a little bit of a, an off odor that can sometimes come from extracts, but most of what I'm smelling right away is like dark, uh, caramely notes. I have tried this one other time. Um, about a week ago, I pulled this out and had a bottle of it, and it wasn't near as good as it is right now. It's had a little time more to mature in the bottle. And a lot of the roughness has smoothed out of it. And I'm hoping that uh, the rest of it will kind of go away as it sits in the bottle for a couple more weeks. But for right now, it is a perfectly good drinkable brown ale. Um, I am very glad to have uh, two cases roughly of this sitting around because I'll drink this all winter long. Yeah, not bad at all. Anyway, I'm going to make some supper, finish drinking this beer, probably have one more. And, uh, and then I've got some more loading to do for this uh, hog hunt that I'm about to go on. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for watching. Uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. We are almost at 100. By the time this video is published, we may have 100 subscribers. And that is uh, thanks to y'all spreading the word around. So uh, thanks for watching this uh, overview of brewing with an extract. Um, you can see it turns out a pretty respectable beer. Um, I can say that this is, is not the best one I've done with extracts, uh, but it's decent. And I'm hoping a couple more weeks in the bottle will um, improve it even more. And hopefully um, this all gives you guys an idea of just how easy it really is to brew a beer at home. And if you enjoy drinking beer, and especially enjoy drinking um, not just your regular light lager type of beers, I would strongly um, suggest that you try brewing your own. Um, it's really a lot of fun, and uh, you can get a lot out of it.